All right, we're live. We're live, and we're back with the left-handed path. Uh, the self-proclaimed longest-running Zweihander live play, actual play game on the internet. <laughs> with Gusto. Uh, we're back, continuing uh, where we left off last week. Uh, we'll get into a recap here, but first we'll do the roundtable introductions. Everybody can say what, what and if they have going on and, and introduce their characters. Uh, Mike, you're up first with Ruby. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, I play Ruby Goodchild, and she is a halfling bravo and gutter snipe. She is the moral compass for the party, trying to keep them on the straight and narrow. No, not really. She, but in this party, she's actually probably the uh, most well-behaved of the group. She only murders people that deserve it. <laughs> At the moment. Which is like, what, everybody at the moment to justify your actions? 78% of the population. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 70% of the population. Uh, Eryxis. Um, I'm Megan. I play Eryxis. She's a gnome uh, barber surgeon uh, prostitute um, who has found a home finally with this, uh, with this ragtag group of um, adventurers. Yep. Yes. <laughs> yes, that is correct. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Bill, tell us about Erg. Erg Singebelch is the uh, moral compass of the party, which isn't good for anybody. <laughs> <laughs> he is a astronomer turned pyromancer and uh, a dunderhead to boot. So he makes lots of poor decisions and uh, we're going to have to be dealing with his poor decision tree for a long time. That's right. A boot. And Edmund. Hey, this is Edmund. I'll be playing Oak tonight. <laughs> <laughs> playing the role of Oak. As Oak. Uh, playing Edmund Randolph, the uh, smuggler turned barrister, aspiring sausage baron with special meat. Uh, yeah, his, uh, his descent into corruption has been sped along a little bit from Erg's compass direction it's pointing, so. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Indeed. And hey, Barsh, indeed. our last player who has not been here for many, many sessions. We have a place Ooh. for him. We'd love him to come back one day. We just don't know what's happened to him. He seems to pop up once in a while. He's like a unicorn. He's a mythical <laughs> creature. Sometimes he shows up, sometimes he doesn't. Barsh, we want you back, buddy. Mm, come on. That is the, our moral compass. He is the moral compass, and without him. Uh, you guys, this is going to turn into a, an evil campaign for real and fast. I think it already has. Uh, <laughs> I too aspire to hoard sauce. Wait. <laughs> uh, good times, good times. Um, all right. How's it going, Brendan? Good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Let's do a recap of what happened last week. You start off at the city gates. City gates, you decided, we need to get on a boat. We need to get on a boat, and we need to get far away from here because we have witch hunters hunting us because we are witches. <clears throat> I can yeah, give it a go here. Nope. Uh, sorry, Oak. Oh, no, no problem. Uh, we, we were trying to... We quickly left our forest campaign with a bunch of half melted gold and uh, decided we were not going to go back to our inn because we're wanted by the Inquisition. Um, as a result, we decided it might be best to just leave the continent altogether. So we went to the nearest large city. This is the biggest city we've ever been to before. Um, went up to the front gate and realized Oh, pat downs and checks probably aren't going to be the best thing for people with wanted posters out on them. So we went and found a second entrance way into the city through the sewer uh, with mostly Edmund and Ruby, I believe, directing that little adventure through the sewer, uh, making sure we were not overspending on getting into the city. Eventually, we did get into the city, went and found a place to... Uh, sleep for the first night by selling some of Edmund's sausages. Spent a night in a house of ill repute, I believe. No, we started to. No, oh, no we no. were looking at that and we yeah. ran into a plague doctor who we had just met a while ago. Uh, and he took us to a tenement. 
Well, you went to you sweat. Right Don't there. forget about. Let's talk about sweat. 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 Well, well, one one important little thing to back up. We noticed after we got into the town that there's apparently some uh, plague or something going yes. on. Yes. And people were being boarded in their homes. To die a lot. Well, to yeah, slowly starve to death and whatnot. To die of the plague. That's right. So yeah, you came into that scene. They were boarding up a tenement when you guys were walking in. They're putting like they're roping it off. People are trying to get out. They were shooting people. They killed someone, did they not? Someone tried to hand their baby out the window. Yeah, to Eurixis. To Eurixis, and she almost took the child. And then the rest of you said, "Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> we don't need that. We don't need that heat. Yeah, we we don't need that problem." Uh, yeah, we ended up going and spending the night in the plague doctor's place who we met from sweat, right? <laughs> yes. Well, it was the plague doctor you met in the last village from the last yes. adventure. Yes, where we got our melted gold. But Poland. he was just coming through to uh, deal with the infection, and he offered us a easy place to sleep as he was in a tenement near the infection that uh, wasn't going to be too expensive, and we were hoping to just lay low for a few days. Guys, please jump in if I'm missing something. Um, but we went to the tenement and spent the night there. And when we woke up, um, Roland was, or sorry, we were being boarded up as the tenement was infected. Um, and when we went to go see Roland and see what the heck was going on, uh, he was in the state of dying or had just died. He was dying. Or he was dying, yeah. And then it's supposed to be all his notes are in his journal, which we couldn't find. And we ended off with seeing a pair of eyeballs looking through like the vents and then looking at us and then scurrying off. Skitter away up in the vents. And he said, aha! I was really hoping you were going to linger more on sweat and talk more about sweat, the hottest brothel in Flans. <laughs> when Flans, be sure to visit sweat. <laughs> <laughs> We have to wait three days to go. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, three days to go you, south. You bought passage to a city by the name of Zada in the far south on another continent, another land, because you want to run away from your problems. You're like, ah, these witch hunters are cramping my style of summoning demons and stuff. So, is, is Zada in the Principality of Vern? <laughs> sure, we'll put it in the Principality of Vern. Event Ven Ray. <clears throat> we we have a map that they're looking at a randomly generated map that we're not going to use as our world map in this if you're wondering what they're asking takedown's playing I was going to show the stream our map there's our world map so they are up here and they want to book passage all the way down there it cost them a lot of money and it's going to take a long time they got to wait three days for their boat just take them away into the sunset. Then it sinks. The campaign's over. We roll a yeah. blue <laughs> And then I tank the ship in the, in the ocean and you're all hooped. You just got crackened. <laughs> yeah. Pray to the deep ones. All right. So let's pick up where we left off then. So you saw a pair of eyes. You go, the diary's not here. All of his other belongings are here except the diary's missing. You see a pair of eyes in the vents and <laughs> you hear them scuttle or whatever it is scuttle up the uh vent upwards there was six stories to this building as well if you remember correctly yes. and uh you Did guys are on you guys are on the second story did anybody else see those eyes and hear that they were in the vent shaft they're like humanish eyes right not like animal eyes what define animal eyes well like a they're not like cat or goat eyes. Otherwise, I think all animal eyes look like human eyes. I don't know. I don't Ruby. know. Ruby, can you and Rixus chase it? Y'all small. Small. Yeah, get in the vent. <laughs> am, I, am I able to get into that Ruby vent? Could fit, Ruby could fit in the vent. Uh, Rixus could not. Am I He's crawling in the vent? He's smaller. No, Ruby's smaller. I mean, Ruby's, um, Ruby's a halfling. If Ruby's she's a, a halfling. She's a gnome. I thought she was smaller. Oh. Yeah, that's a good point. Are gnomes uh, smaller than halflings? No. No. We're... Wait, I actually have my character exactly how big I am. 
Ooh, as do I. She's small, you're small. Oh. <clears throat> I'm a slender four foot three inch gnome. Ruby is where do we where do we monitor such things? Oh boy. Looks like he, he he looks like he's in the witness protection uh, program. Okay, so Ruby is uh four foot one. Hundred and five. All this pounds. talk, I'm getting in the vent. <laughs> the two of you are like comparing size and weight, and all of a sudden Erg hops to the vent and so tries cramming in there. Uh, I'm, I'm eight ten six thirty. So <laughs> your head fits in there, and you're kind of like on your back looking up because it's scurried up, and all you can see is a, a shape in the darkness scurrying um, up away from you, and you can hear. You know it what? Ru Ruby's gonna Ruby's gonna take that opportunity to climb up the ogre and and um, onto his shoulder, and he'll get she'll get right down by his ear and say, "What do you see, big guy?" Her next pet. All right. Let me. Uh, did you get, is the uh, vent open? Did did he pull the? Um, oh, his head's off? in it. Okay. His head is in the vent. He's trying to cram right. himself in there. Well, on that dunderhead uh... roll, I'm going to take my head out and uh, aggressively help Ruby in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if if it's too aggressive, Ruby will um, manage him with her main gouge. <laughs> Well, this thing has a head start because you you guys are busy talking with an ogre in this in the uh, vent. Well, it's not like there's anywhere for it to go. Um, Do you know that? Have you been in this vent system before, Ruby? Good child. No. All right. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, okay, so uh, Ruby is going to um, pull out one of her uh, torches, though. As she gets there, she'll say, uh, um, "Hey, can you uh, can you light this for me, big fella?" Yeah, I'll, I'll light it. Sounds like a good idea, Go into the wooden <laughs> vent with a torch. Oh, is it, uh, is it a wooden vent? <laughs> How much metal do you think is around? Yeah, it's it's not aluminum. <laughs> yeah. Like... yeah, it's true. I guess they didn't have aluminum <laughs> venting back then. Um, it, would it be safe to, to have a, a torch lit? No, probably not. Okay, all right. Just everyone burns a horrible death. Except, and I mean, then it'll be safe for me. In. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, I guess we don't have anything like a light spell these days or anything that um, glows in the dark. No. Is it no, pitch black in the vent? Oh, it's pitch black. You'll see uh, light shining in, like, in intervals if you look up, like, on each of the floors and each of the rooms that are connecting to it. You'll see. All right, Ruby says, I, I can't see in there. She's going to... um. She's just going to take a crossbow and uh, let a bolt fly down the center of the thing and see if she catches anything. All right. Make That's normally roll. how she solves problems. I don't see why she I... should change now. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Make me a, uh, a hard, simple bargain. melee hard bargain. All right. Can I uh, put any points in it for aiming or anything? Do I like to, to aim down the center? Uh, because it's blackness, you're just basically shooting into darkness. No, it's 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 a shot in the dark. I'll give you that. All right. <laughs> what Ozzy said. All right. He also that said "Bark one. of the Moon." Okay, here we go. And he peed on the Alamo. How does that make you feel, Oak? Hell, Mary. <laughs> What's that? Conflicted. Conflicted. As a Texan, that make you by feel. his own statement, he was so drunk he didn't know where he was. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Well, at least I didn't waste a good roll. All right, so you fire a crossbow bolt boom, up into the, the vent shaft, and you hear it ping off of something else, and then it falls back down. Not like, you know, into your head or anything, but it falls back down towards you, clanking back down the vent. And you so can this hear this thing up. stop and skitter some more, and then get out uh, on one of the floors above you. You can't determine which one, but it definitely got out somewhere. All right, so Ruby hops back down and says, "You know what? It's in the building. Let's just uh, let's go room to room." Works for me. Was there when y'all when they looked up in? Could they tell? Did they look like it went all the way up, or did it dart no. off like one of the? No, it, it 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 got off at one of the rooms above. Yeah, us. it got off on one of the floors. It didn't go all the way up. <clears throat> can can we stuff the like? this floor's vent with something oh yeah that's a good idea you could stuff with the dead body of the doctor 
<laughs> no, he's got bedding and stuff. And yeah, Ruby belongings. says, "Yeah, let's 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 put the plague infected meat mm. in the air vent." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, on a scale from one to ten, how edible is he looking? Uh, you could definitely eat him he, if you're hungry. I'm not enough. that dumb. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna, I moved Nothing is said, but Edmund's got that, that calculating his head. Like, I wonder if I could purify that for sausage or if no. that would linger. He's he like, didn't did, say it. He just thinks. Plague sausage. Did oh, Edmund man. ever get his um, chaos ranking uh, no, thing? No, no. Don't, don't talk about it. Don't talk plague, about it. Plague, uh, plague sausage is the sausage you serve when you don't want to see your customers. Yeah, I have an IOU for him. We'll deal with that when you're out at sea. It'll be much better that way. This is this is fantastic here. map. I love it. I didn't. This is so. I'm taking bits and pieces from a pre-made. This isn't all me. This is a, a pre-made adventure, and this is a map from it too. So we're using pieces of some of our stuff and some of it, and we're blending it together. So wow. I did not what make this map, game. but it is good. It is good. This is this is wonderful for uh, like a uh, 3D here, map. It reminds me of like again like uh, this War of Mine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! That video game. The people can't who are watching here. I'll quickly flip over the thing and they can see it. It's from actually a Warhammer adventure by the name of Slaughter in Spitalfeld. Uh, oh, it's a great game. oh, there we go. There's the map, so people can see what they're looking at. So they're on the second floor, and this thing goes all the way up to the sixth floor. This place isn't big on building inspectors, I take it. No, <laughs> the big uh, pieces of lumber holding it in place. <laughs> Could we maybe confirm there's nothing below us before we start working our way up? Ah, yeah, yeah. There's, yeah, there's the floor below you. There's also a, a basement by the looks of it. So are we, um, we doing the kill them all and let God sort it out thing, or? Well, I mean, now that you've brought it up. Well, because I mean, <laughs> we're, we're gonna find three things: people dying of plague. An infected, bad guys, and then unknowns. I think you just described all of it as the same thing. Yep. <laughs> well, I just, I mean, there could be some innocent people in the building. Okay, now we had spent some, we came here with, uh, what's his name? Plague Doctor. Yeah, yeah. Did we go to any of those lower rooms or did we go straight to just like our, this, this You just story? went straight to where you guys are staying. Do we have the entire second floor? Yeah. Let's go clear the first then. Make sure nothing comes in behind us or is trying to get down and out. There's also a basement. Maybe. So maybe we want to barricade the uh, door down into the stairway here if we can, or barricade the stairway, go clear the bottom, and then work our way up with quick checks. Yes, let's first stuff the vent. Sounds good. Ruby? Cushions or pillows or... Yeah, yeah hand me up There's some bedding, she says. Grab. Yeah, yeah. I, I could stuff it. Hand me up some bedding. Oh, you don't mean just leave Ruby? Okay. <laughs> no. Hey, I'm getting a vibe from you there, uh, Erg. What's going on, man? Thought we were friends. The Dunderhead roll. I've got to be an idiot. <laughs> oh, you don't have to be a mean idiot. She says, and don't forget I have these. She shows you her pointy sticks. <laughs> I'm sorry. He says, don't forget I have these. This big demon wings fly out. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, I didn't know about those. <laughs> All right, so you stuff yeah, a bunch off. of bedding in the, uh, in the vent shaft. So you're able to effectively block it off on this level. If anything encounters it, it's going to have to take some time to move it out of the way. So you want to go up or down? First floor. Yeah, you guys go we'll down, down to the first floor. And there's really only one room down there. And as you get down there, you see a big, massive, 10-foot ogre. Hey, before we go, um, are there any plates or anything breakable in the room that we could put beside the vent that if something was pushing it out, we'd hear smashing? Uh, high or low? Hi. Yes. Awesome. There's, yeah, a porcelain bedpan full of <laughs> urine that you can smash and throw there. Ew. Perfect. Not my house. 
uh, yeah, we'll we'll put some stuff around the uh, the places we've blocked so that if something's pushing its way through, we'll hear it smash. Hopefully, from the sixth floor. Oh, hopefully. What's well, that I hear over on the second floor? Well, we're well, we're that? clearing the bottoms. It's that chamber pot. All right, so you guys go down to the next floor, and uh, standing, you go down the floor. There's a hallway. There's one door leading to a suite, and then the hallway also goes to the very front door. And the front door is banged and boarded up. And standing there is a whole bunch of the residents of this building and a big, massive ten foot ogre. He's wearing like a patchwork of old jackets that have been like stitched together because he's so big. There's nothing that really fits him. And uh, he turns to the group of you, and he looks and he points his finger. Uh, who are you? We're plague doctors. Can't you tell by the masks? <laughs> you guys do have masks. <laughs> you didn't say you're wearing them. Heck, man, I'm wearing mine. I figure we'd grab. The, yeah, we don't know what we're going to encounter in here. So. Yeah, it's it's a plague infected building. This is all we know. Do you know Roland? Yes. Is it because of yours? As he's speaking, his you can hear his stomach gr- like grumbling and rumbling the whole time. Where is he? And he grabs his stomach. Oh, I'm so hungry. He's up. He's upstairs, dead. He burps. He opens up a uh, a sack that's hanging off his belt. He takes out a a uh, a handful of rocks and throws them down his gullet. Nice. He can eat anything. You got that one. That's an awesome trait. Um, <laughs> he's lucky. He can eat the couch in the room. <laughs> he goes, we trapped in here. What are you going to do? You going to help us, doctor? Uh, well, that, are, do you guys live here? Like, Yes, this is our home. And there's like a group of like seven to ten people. They're all tenants of this tenement as well. And they're gathered and they're all like looking at the group. They're all nattering and arguing with one another when you guys are coming down the stairs. And they've all stopped and they're all looking at you. It's a mismatch of men and women, young and old. How do you know Roland? He come here. He say he going to help area. I know him from long ago. I kind of lean over to Eurixis, and she's more the doctor of the, an actual doctor for this. And I'm like, uh, might want to let them know that we're missing Roland's uh, journal if they've seen it. It could help us find it because that may have uh, the cure in it. Oh, right. Hey, as a friend of Roland for a long time, we're, uh, we're, we're looking for his, his journal. Before he passed, he said it was, it held the key. And uh, it's gone missing. Since. Do you know anything about, like, vent rats? Journal vent rats? No. You see rats in vent, I kill them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, we've lost Mike. I looked at our overlay and we were all buggered up. Yeah, he's gone. We've, we lost Mike, so I've switched over to the map. So everybody's watching the map. Oh, occasionally I click on Zoom, you can see us. Wave, everybody. Hi. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've lost Mike. So we're just on the map right now. Um, yeah, I... You no, know, you see rat? Wait, what floor? I kill it. I'm... Oh, we were in I'm the landlord room. of this building. Well, it was something. I don't know if it was a rat, but it was something looking out of vents at us. And it took off, went upstairs somewhere show me i highly suggest just blocking off the vent and we'll go deal with it we're oh, equipped for this an ogre he gets all <laughs> excited when you speak and he find dawns on him that you're standing there even though you're like eight and a half feet tall or whatever skinny he's I a mean, at, at 10 feet this guy's gigantic he's got to be close to a thousand pounds too yes he's huge he's massive you doctor? I'm a lot of things. Oh. <laughs> impressive. You're a landlord. That's impressive. <laughs> Thank you. He, he's like blushing. <laughs> now let's now let's keep your building intact here and go block off the vents. We'll go deal with this. Uh, can we see the basement as well? Uh, basement full of 
garbage. We can look in there, but they're not much down there. Lots and lots of things from past tenants store down there. I not go down there. It's a maze. What else upstairs too? Just living there's space people. or anything? There's people. There's an uh, orphanage. There's uh, a fancy elf on the top floor. There's all kinds of people. Hey, orphanage could be one of them children came down in here. Uh, now you mention it, they're sometimes getting vents. What what floor are they on? I'm back. Fourth. Fourth floor. So we check that one first. I do Mike needs order. a voice modulator because he looks like he's in witness protection when it's all blacked out. Oh, wow. The, having the overlay. Why am I down at the bottom end over there? That's weird. I, I screwed up your overlay. My uh, internet just kicked out. That's okay. There's two of me, which is freaking me out. There can be only one. A lot be worse for us. Only one. <laughs> oh, I'm. Oh, I see what's going on. Watch this. <laughs> Fixed. All right. So, oh yeah, maybe children. You never know. Uh, when you guys are coming down the stairs, you could hear them chattering. The the folks who live here as well. And I'll let you guys glean a little bit of uh, things that you may have overheard based off some rolls, if you like. A little bit, a little bit of gossip, if you will. Yeah. That useless rumor skill. I was gonna Do say. I eaves, finally get to roll drop. I was gonna say eavesdrop. Ah. Ah. Eavesdrop would Standard be more or? appropriate. Standard or I will make it routine because they were talking quite loudly as you were coming down the stairs, and you but you were trying to be quiet at the same time. <laughs> what is it? Rumor. <laughs> oh, by one. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, except that's not Kellen. I got to check. Arexis. Edmund. Sorry. Go ahead, Ruby. Make me a, a routine eavesdrop. Coming. Coming up, boss. Yeah, that map is really cool. That vertical one. I like it. Hmm. Have you played that War of Mine? Briefly. I haven't gotten too, too deep into it. Actually, I actually have the board game. Also, my brother gave it to me for Christmas a few years ago. Oh, he backed yeah. it on Kickstarter, then he got it, and he's like, I'll never play this. And he gave it to me. I haven't played it yet either. So I've only played the first little bit. It's it, the way the layout's cool. Yeah, the layout's awesome. All right. So you rolled like a nine or something, Eryxis, didn't you? You rolled real low. and That was Edmund. Edmund, and Eryxis rolled a just under her number. All right. So that's going to determine how many things you heard. So as you're walking down, you hear. Uh, you hear a woman, Eryxis, and she says, Used to be more folks living here. Everyone you see now, three or more lived before. Couldn't swing a cat without hitting someone. Especially with all them urchins under Pesserin's care. A lot of them moved away with the, when the sickness started, but a lot more have died from it since. Now we're going to die here as well, locked in this coffin. Excellent. Uh, and Edmund, you hear uh, a man speaking to someone else. He goes, I heard that good-for-nothing Srulam shouting earlier that the elf upstairs is up to no good, that he's responsible for all this, and that Srulam's gonna kill him. I did, I did. Of course, Srulam's full of hot air, as much as his brother Srulak, so I doubt there's anything to it. And you hear one more thing. You hear a, a woman talking to uh, to another woman. She goes, about f about four a day fall to the sickness. Not terrible, given most plagues. What I've seen, but enough to ruffle uh, Shaylin's feathers. We lost Mike again. We lost Mike again. It's okay. Internet problems are a reality. We're going back to the vertical map. So those are the, the rumors that you um, that you gleaned. Excellent. I think we should check on these orphans first. Most okay. likely, a vent, something that small could fit in the, the vents. Uh, the other goes, okay, you need me to go with you? Well, no. You, you find it on own. Make sure nothing comes out of the basement. Block okay. your vents. Or try to leave. Okay. <laughs> well, we can't leave. We're locked in here. <laughs> Does it mean somebody, 
There's guards outside. They'll shoot me. Ugh. Right? <laughs> Why do you... Ugh. Oh, Stacy was just saying she saw the Titanic on Netflix, and I went, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excellent. I approve of that reaction. That is what she said as well, though, when she found it. Okay, so... He go, okay, you go fourth floor. That's where Orphanage is. Could be one of them little urchins. Thanks so much. Uh, what was your name again? To the ogre. Me? Yes. Oh, he's all taken back. No one ever asked me my name. You're very nice. I am your exes. And I, you am are... G- I am Gino. Gino. Well, thank you very much, Gino. Thank you for all your help. You're welcome. Doctor, you have anything for indigestion? As he says that, he throws more rocks in his mouth. <laughs> I, I, I ruffle in the bag and find some, like, bag lint. And, uh, pull it out and I hold it. Uh, here, here, perfect thing. It'll cure it. He snatches it up and just throws it into his throat. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, and it sold all our sausage. We could give him some of that. I'm sorry. <laughs> You could you could advertise it at sweat. At Flance's hottest brothel sweat. You, you know what? I have I have a toadstool that cures stomach pain that I got like a hundred years ago. Are you gonna give like, it to him? Like a year and a half. I'm gonna throw it to him and say eat that. Oh, really? He takes it and, and munches down it. And then now I'm deleting it from my trappings. <laughs> and he sits there. He's, I don't know if it mushroom or or what the doctor gave, but I feel better. Thank you. And make sure if you see if you see a journal pop up or something like that that you hold on to it for me, okay? Okay. Don't stool that cures upset stomach. You literally have that. All right. I didn't doubt it. it. Seems like a pretty useless item that you've you've been wanting to get rid of for a long time. All right, up to the fourth floor. (laughs) Are we going to stop on the third? I don't know. Are you going to stop on the third? Do you guys want to stop on the third? Unless there's something that catches our eyes. Let me tell. Let me consult the map. Shall I? Um. Nope. They are completely empty. Those two wings. Excellent. Completely empty. Ruby says, well, perhaps that's a good reason for us to check them out. Oh, where did you come from, Ruby? <laughs> you scared me. All right, Ruby's back. I'm hiding in the shadows. Did you, have bad, you were talking about bad storms the other night. You're having bad, those bad storms now? No, I'm just stupid. Okay. I'm just having problems <laughs> with my internet. All right. All right, so yeah, you can check out, you can stomp up there and you kind of, you knock on some doors on the third floor and you shout, you kind of, hello, anybody home? The doors, well, if, and uh, there's no answer. It's much like the second floor where you guys stayed last night. If you remember, the second floor was also uh, abandoned, it was empty, and you guys were well, able to take any room that you wanted on the second floor. Ruby says, I know they, I know it came up, so um, let's kick these doors in and search this place. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, it right. is an orphanage. We don't want to scare a bunch of little kids and having them scatter and running. It's we're empty. They said it's empty up here. This floor is empty. So let's check. So if the, if the floor is empty, why are the doors locked? Or closed. I didn't say they were Somebody. locked. I didn't say they were locked. You just knocked on them and oh, kind of just well, said, yeah, hey, Ruby, Ruby will throw the doors open. And, yeah, you and, throw the and, doors open and they're empty. The odd one's going to have like a mattress in the corner. There'll be some belongings left behind from people that used to live there. But uh, they they are empty. I'm gonna stuff the vent. <sighs> stuff yeah. the vents. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Indeed. Okay, you stuff the vents with anything you can find to f- catch this critter. That includes chamber pots in the back of it, so that we can make a real mess. Sure. Yep. You don't we need something different so we know which breaks and we know oh, that sound like a chamber pot breaking. It's on the second Quick floor. To the third floor. 
I'll let you be our resident Foley artist. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You kick the doors open. You don't find anything. One of the rooms has been, I don't know, defecated in ages ago. It's just kind of rotting in the corner. Good times. Good times. Right, I- We've uh, we, we've disabled all the vents so that Welcome. they can't get in and out of them. Yep. Welcome to the real flans. All right. To the fo- to the next floor, Ruby says. All right. You get to the next floor, and uh, as soon as you end this floor, you can hear the shouting of children from behind. Uh, the there's two doors on either side. There's a door, uh, and there's a whole bunch of garbage and shit piled up in front of it. not literally shit but garbage broken cupboards and tables and things like that all piled up in front of the door and then there's the door that you on the other side of the hallway and you can hear the shouting of kids every once in a while you can hear a woman's voice quiet quiet stop hitting one another ruby's wearing her mask by the way okay is, 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 is <laughs> this n95 or what kind of how, how good a mask is it n100 <laughs> yeah, i don't know apparently not good enough to it's keep a, the uh, doctor from N- yeah right <laughs> it's a plague doctor mask it's for show it's for looks oh uh, it's like one of those long beaks that that's completely open at the end well, no it's yeah. not open. it's not uh, open but it's a beak yeah yeah. got a bunch well, of like sage and whatnot in yeah, it. yeah so you would stuff it with herbs and different things that were supposed to help purify and keep the smell down I'd prefer a HEPA filter, please. <laughs> You're going to wait a, ha- a couple hundred years. Yeah, yeah right? The trees. <laughs> All right. All right. Pathfinder would have a spell for this. <laughs> Not oh, here board. we go. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. All right. So you guys get this. You got the, the one door that's all blocked with rubble and garbage, which you can see on the map there. That one end of the hallway, and then the other end of the hallway, you can you hear screaming and shouting at children, playing and laughing and taunting, and a woman shouting, shut up, shut up, every once in a while. Yeah, beat on the door. You beat on the door, and all of a sudden, the whole room erupts. Who's at, who's at the door? There's someone at the door. There's someone at the door. Uh, and uh, after a while, the door swings open. And there's a middle-aged woman standing there. She's about, oh, I don't know, like five foot nine, broad shoulders. She looks quite muscular. She's quite got quite a muscular build to her. Curly charcoal hair. Um, and she uh, she's got uh, a dress on. She's got an apron on. She she's wiping something off on her hands. And there's kids like hanging on either leg. And you can see kids looking in the background. She's like, ah, who are you? Uh, we're we're plague doctors. You know, going door to door, checking uh checking out how everybody's doing in, in the building and so forth, assessing. Are you, um, is it pres- Presserance? Yes. Oh, fantastic. Uh, do you know, do you know Roland the Plague Doctor? Hmm. Maybe. Well, we're, uh, we're guests of his and uh, we were, we were helping him kind of figure out what's going on here and and something really important of his has gone missing and i'm i'm curious if it if it ended up in here what might that be his journal the book's got writing in it why would i have his journal yeah <laughs> you sound like monty python <laughs> <laughs> I, well i'm totally picturing uh oh, damn it now i'm going blank which actor it was but yeah, one of the Monty Python guys. Oh, totally. From uh, the Reese Burmese city. Oh, absolutely. Sorry. We went. I she looks at you scrutinizingly. Why would I have his book here? Well, we, we, did, we did see um, so somebody in the vent uh, leaving his room shortly after he died. And um, uh um, the gen- the ogre gentleman from downstairs had advised that from time to time, uh, some of your uh, children tend to crawl the vents. Hey, don't you talk bad about me, children! I'm not talking. It's- children have to exercise, and in big cities like this, you know, it's not always possible for them to go outside and run and play. I myself have found my have found uh, great exercise running in small tunnels and such. You can make me a challenging charm test. Terry Gillum. That's who I was picking. There you go. Mm -hmm. 
you know what happens if charm doesn't work, so roll well. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Oh, it's like the scene from Star Wars Episode 3 where all the younglings die. Oh, it's a critical failure. Uh, <laughs> don't take that toe about me, children. They they ain't thieves. Ah, be gone. Well, you she know, goes to could... shut the door on the, the group of you. Stick my foot in the door before she can close it. Ah. Oh, she's not she trying to sort your kids with hers. Ah, she's not trying to sort your kids, but if you want them all to catch a plague and die, then go ahead and let us not find that book that may have a cure in it. And all we want to do is find it to help all these people, including your children. <laughs> That's enough about you, she says, and she points at you. <laughs> I don't like that one. I will stand behind her. <laughs> Hey, Dustin. Here you go. She goes, mm. Well, there is one. Trinity's his name. He's a slippery little one, and he's been known to be, uh, to plod around in the vents. Yeah, well, he's not in trouble. We just want to find out if he's seen the book. Uh, how about you wait here? <laughs> she right. make it easy for you. Closes the door yeah, as you start talking, time. Erg. And you hear chuh, 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 do a bunch of locks. And the kids are all like, who's that? Who's at the door? Who's at the door? Shut up! Shut up! And you hear her in there. And after some time, she comes back and chuh, 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 she unlocks them. She opens the crack. She goes, I might have what you're looking for. But I'm going to need something in return. What are you looking for? I need medicine for my sick children. Well, that's not a problem. It's what may be in that book is the list of medicines. Well, I know we could find some medicine here in this building. Where's that? Uh, them dwarf brothers on the floor above. Go go get some medicine from them, from my little ones, and you can have the diary. There's all kinds of medicines. What kind specific? For my, the wrong my, kind of medicine could kill children. one of them. My sick children. Those dwarves have it. They're no good. <laughs> the sick children kind. That the penicillin. This tastes like bananas. <laughs> you know the wrong kind of medicine could kill one of them. Uh, <laughs> uh, she looks at the children. She looks at you. She goes, "I'm willing to take that chance." <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> uh, turn it. We'll, we'll be right back. We got a deal. Sure. Smash it. <laughs> she closes the door. <laughs> Close all. Turns on the locks. Shut up! Shut up! You just hear her saying inside the room as the children. Who's that? Who's that? Who's there? Did they bring us anything? Shut up! There you go. Yeah, Terry Gillen from Life of Brian is Brian's mom. That's who I was thinking of. Yep. All right, so the dwarves are on the next floor. The brother dwarves. So I think this is floor five. The next one is the... Um, or is that Terry Jones? The next one you said was an elf? You think about the one that yeah, gets... Yeah, the top the... floor is an elf. So yeah, this the top is floor, floor five, is a right? The penthouse. A penthouse. But the dwarves live on the next floor, and someone was shouting about some brothers yelling at the dwarf and threatening him and bang on his door. These dwarves. Someone's cutting into our business. All right, so you guys make your way up to the fourth floor, and the fourth floor is seemingly quiet, except you can hear someone stomping around behind one of the doors at the far end of the uh, floor and muttering to himself. You can't quite out make out what he's muttering, but it's in a low, gravelly voice. And he's stomping back and forth inside of his apartment. So, how do we want to approach this one? Um, nice or unhappy? We, we the good cops or the bad cops this time? I think we start as we start um, as we always do, friendly and helpful, and willing to work with somebody and. Then if things don't go our way, we, we get violent. I'll tell you, Bosch would stay off a bottle. He could be here to talk to him. 
passed no, he, out drunk dwarf. He has issues. It's okay. He's I'll working through them. Me and, me and Edmund will hang back in case we're needed. Yeah, you small folk all get along, don't you? <laughs> you guys are much more charming. <laughs> Ruby, you want to give this one a go? Uh, sure. Yeah, Ruby will... Um, and what are we going to do? Just ask for the medicine? They're probably going to want something in return, of course. We could give them sausages. We no, could they give them fire. Fire. And sold all the sausages. They sold it all to sweat. Oh, you sold all your... But... There wasn't much left. Five pounds worth of sausage. We could give them cold steel and fire. Let's we go can make see some more want. sausage, but we'll take a while to procure all the ingredients. Mm. Okay, and... well, well, let's go talk to him anyways. <laughs> Ruby heads up and knocks on the door. You knock on the door and you hear, ah! so, and this, all of a sudden the walking and the talking stop. And you can hear footsteps, heavy footsteps, slowly go towards the door. And he swings it open and you're greeted by a dwarf holding a blunderbuss. Ah, who is it? What do you want? Ah. Hello, hello, hello. It's your neighbors from below. We were hoping we could have a quick chat with you. I don't know. How are you today? Neighbors. How are you this fine day? <laughs> Not good. My brother's missing. That damned elf probably did something to him. Hmm, perhaps you could never trust elves. What so, do you want? And he's got his he's got the blunderbuss trained at you. Well, and perhaps he looks very capable with it as well. So um Ruby will just do one of these little things where she just kind of eek, moves it to the side if she can. Say <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we uh, were uh, we were hoping to uh, conversate with you and see if we couldn't um, maybe help you with your problem and see if we could find your brother. Why don't you go ahead and make me an, an easy charm test, Ruby? Okay. Or she gets an easy one. Well, <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is if there was any dwarves in the party, it would not be easy at all. It would be very hard. You're lucky Barsh isn't here. Actually, Barsh would have charged him and attacked him. They, they don't like... Uh... They don't like other dwarves. Nice. So you uh, you start to push the blunderbuss aside, and he pokes his head out in the hallway, and he looks back and forth. Uh, Edmund and uh, Erg, are you guys kind of hiding, or are you just kind of like standing there out of sight? Just kind of standing at the back, not you know. yeah, standing standing back. No yeah. need to be pushy not, yet. Yeah, not crowding kinda, up at the door. We're just kind of hanging back. He narrows his eyes and goes, "You're not with." The you're not with the Flints dwarves, are you? Oh, no. Goodness, no. Mm. Who are the Flints? Flint. You're in Flints. The Flints dwarves. Don't oh. even know a dwarf. They have they have their own dwarves here? No, no, those... no, no. Listen, listen, listen. Uh, my brother and I may have done something to upset them, and uh, we have to be a little careful uh, these days. Uh, now, what is it you wanted? Well, we um, we're wondered if we could maybe do some horse trading. But of course, you don't have forces. What I'm actually hoping we could do <laughs> is very confused. Trade for uh, tra trade for some medicine. What sort help, of medicine? The kind that would help the children below. Ah, the woman sent you up here looking for it. I told her it'll cost her. We just want to help the children. Yeah, yeah. Everybody wants to help the children. Everybody. I know, wants to right? Help the it's a good cause. Uh, do you know who I want to help? I want to help myself, and I want to help my brother. Well, Her future. Tell us about your brother. Where, where do you think he is? I don't know. He was up there. He was banging on that damn elves door this morning when we heard all of this stuff broke out and we got locked into this building and I haven't seen him since. So you think he's upstairs? I don't know. That damn elf probably did something to him. Well, we could we could check into it for you. Tell us about the elf. Why would the elf keep your brother? Why was your brother going up to talk to the elf? Because the elf? to blame for everything well he's an elf i mean but right right i go, like you <laughs> i like you go on though what 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 specifically was he was he going up there for just so we know what we're walking into well because we got bored in this place that that damn elf throws these parties these big extravagant elegant parties all the time who knows what he dragged in here right i mean you're supposed to be social distancing it's a right? pandemic six feet apart Right, I understand. I okay, like the well, masks. See, you're responsible. 
try and all do our part. So, all right, we'll go up and talk to that elf. Now, is he alone or does he have friends? Yeah, he's alone. He might have friends. I don't know. He lives by himself. All right. It's and strange, uh, which, like all the elves are. What's your uh, what's your brother's name so we know who to ask for? What, at the dwarf? Yeah. Or at the elf? No, what's what? The, I'm asking the dwarf what his brother's name is. Uh-oh. He was confused. Uh, my, bro- my brother's name yeah. is uh, Srulam. And I'm Srulak. Okay, so I'm looking for Srulam and Srulak sent me. I got it. So uh, we, we get your brother. We bring him down here. You help us out. Let us uh, save the children. Yeah, you find my brother. I will give you the medicine for those kids. All right. Sounds like a plan. Hey, if I- we can't find your brother, how much is it? How much is what? <laughs> The medicine. Uh, how much you got? I got three silver and a bad temper. Twelve. We oh, no, no, it's going well. <laughs> he raises the blunder bus slowly back up. Stop, Twelve stop, stop. and we got a deal. Okay, we'll uh, we'll go find your brother. All right. Ruby's going to close the door before we talk through the close. And we're going to head up to the next level and look for the elf. All right, so you start, you walk towards the stairwell to head up to the penthouse, and as you're doing so, uh, you notice that one of the doors is uh, partially open on this floor, and you can see what looks like a, a body possibly laying in that room. Big body, little body, stumpy body? You, you take a look at the in the room? Well-bearded body? Yeah. <laughs> if you take a, a peek in that room, it looks like a well-bearded little stumpy body uh, with... Damn. Burnt blonde hair and about five foot one. Okay. Um, Do you look like anybody's brother? He Um, might be the brother of that other guy. Well, you know what, though? He didn't say whether I had to bring him back alive or not. No, he didn't say that. He said, just find my brother. Right. Uh, He's he's lying unconscious uh, in in the dust, in this abandoned room, in the dust. Okay. There's nobody else around? Not that you can see. Hey, hey, Erg, go on up here, big fella. Look, looks like someone was using fire. <laughs> Clear the room. I'll pick him up. We'll take him down. Is there anybody in the room? Uh, he's the only one in the room. D- um, does anybody want to look him over? Yeah, is he alive? Uh, yeah, I was going to say, I thought you were going to burn him. <laughs> uh... Yeah, I'll look him over. You look him over and he's he kind of mumbled. Uh, he's he's not really coming to. He's not very coherent, but he is still alive. You can go ahead and make me an easy heal test, please, Eryxes. Or anybody. Does he look like he may be infected with whatever got Roland? Yeah, he seems he seems to have heavy bruising around his uh around his neck. Yeah, Ruby's not touching that. <laughs> Did you pass uh Eryxis? Oh my god! What's with your crit fails tonight, lady? (laughs) Damn. You say, he's infected with the plague. He has all of the symptoms. We must not touch him. We must not do anything with him. Shouldn't we burn a body if it's got the plague? uh, He's like moaning and groaning. I'm not not sick. (laughs) You kind of look sick, friend. Your brother sent us to get you. What happened? As I'm like this to like everybody. Like stand back. (laughs) So, yeah, I'm just going to step over top of Eurix's, pick him up, and start taking him downstairs. <laughs> Take him to his brother's uh, <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're moving forward. <laughs> just zoop. All right, let's go. You get a Louis Vuitton dwarven handbag. <laughs> All right. So he's, he's, he's barely conscious. Sorry, yeah, he's got heavy bruising around his, around his neck. And um, you go back to his brother's door, he's going to bang on the door and... What are you yeah, pretty do, much. Right? This belongs to you. His eyes light up. Where did you find him? Was it that damned elf? No idea. Upstairs, but he's infected. With the plan. <sighs> you see his eyes light up with rage. Ah, ah, that damned elf. He's a fiend. Make no mistake. You heard my brother. And I'm going to make war of vengeance. Look like a bloody tea party when I get my hands think, on him. Hey. He's not yours until we get what we His need. His ears will be mine. And he charges up the door with his blunderbuss. 
Okay. You know, I'm standing in the door way. with his uh, uh, Then he, turned, he, he like walks and he dunk, thunk. Out of the way, ogre. We First need our medicine. We <sighs> yeah, you talk some sense. All right, uh, the medicine, fine. Um, he wouldn't my brother over there. Either. And he points <laughs> to a corner. You walk in and you see there's four rooms in here. And he goes into uh, one room that's got a, a big heavy door on it. And he puts, a, puts some... It's got like a lock. He unlocks it. And it's got a padlock. And it's got like a combination lock. And he opens this heavy door. And he closes it behind him. He comes back out uh, shortly after with um, five vials of medicine. And he locks it all behind him again. He goes, ah, there you go. Now I've got some elven ears to claim. Hey, good luck with that. Thanks. Thanks for your help, <laughs> Doc. All right, does anybody else care to stop him? Because I do not, so... <laughs> well, like, as far as I'm concerned, that's that's perfect for me. Well, here's a I question. Don't care. Do we want to... Ruby says, if this medicine works, maybe... Uh, maybe that's something pretty valuable. Eva, do you know what this is? And looks at Argon, Eurexus... Because he knows Ur can do alchemy. It, Eryxis, you look it over, and it's like for like common ailment for children. It's just like a common. It's like chicken pox sort of thing. It's not. This isn't plague medicine. Oh, it's not going to help us. No. What will help us is that notebook. It's Tylenol Children's. Tylenol okay. Children's extra strength. <laughs> Tastes right. like fruit. Now die free. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, the, the second I have the um, the medicine, I think I'm heading downstairs to go get the book. I don't care about any of these people. All right. So you go back down, you march down, you can hear the kids shouting in the apartment again, you bang on the door, and, and again, you got it. Right here, where's the book? Ah, she snatches out of your hands. Hold I, on. I, it's not in front of her till she... Uh, hold on she closes the door stomps away comes back she's got a she's got this like leather bound journal she's on her hands is this what you're looking for yes can i sure i can't read it from there so give me the medicine so do i do i have to have some kind of weird standoff with the <laughs> <Yeah. orphan> <laughs> <laughs> yes her and her children i hand her some of the medicine in in one hand i'm assuming it all fits in my palm and reach out for the book sure yeah it's in vials she puts the book down in your palm i immediately hand it to uh Eurixis, who's probably much better with this stuff than i am i really snatch it up and go not that she's rolling great yeah you open it up <laughs> and you start looking through it and uh, you, you can't make out anything that's written in here. <laughs> Excellent. It, it appears like it's ri written in Elvish. Oh. Yeah, and now the elves are going to be dead when we get there. <laughs> the elves! We've got to go. It's written in Elvish. means nothing. I can't predict this. This is one of those go to the top floor, go to the bottom, <laughs> go to the middle, go to the second, go to the fourth, up to the fifth, back to the first. <laughs> All right, well, let's sprint to the top. <laughs> All right, you run away. She catches, barely gets the medicine out of your hands, and you're like, "Boom!" You're gone. She, your ex just goes, "It's an elvish," and you're like, "Ugh!" And you, as you get to the stairs, you can hear banging up on the top floor. "I'm gonna kill you, dwarf! I'm gonna kill you! Show yourself!" And you hear <laughs> the blunderbuss is shot. I'm gonna kill you, dwarf! Or I'm gonna kill you. Elf. I'm gonna kill you, elf! And the blunderbuss goes off, and you guys run up the stairs, and um. And your dwarven friend is standing there at the door, and he's he's loading the blunderbuss again. It looks like he he might have misfired and went through the the roof. Ha! Ah! What are you doing? Are you here to help me? No, help me hey, kill you're gonna this have to hang on. Yeah? Well, we don't know that he actually hurt your brother, but we need him to decipher for this script to fix this plague problem. Nope, he's mine. He could be yours afterwards, dwarf. Come on. Nope. We had a deal. I'd, uh, I'd like to cast a spell. <laughs> okay, I can't grasp. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no.
Oh, critical Crit success. success. What does that mean? <laughs> Crit success oh, above me. He, he is also on his back. So the blunderbuss goes flying out of his hands and he falls on his ass. And he's like, what happened? It's you're elf te- magic. You're terrible oh. with that thing. <laughs> it's that damn elf. Oh, it's what you which, get for going which, against the will of the gods. Which one of us up? is near the blunderbuss? Uh, what are there? There's four of you? Yep. yep. Let's roll. Uh, Edmund, it lands at your feet. Pick it up. Ah, needed it, another one of these. Give that here. Give me back my gun. Not yet. Careful what you ask for, and I cock the hammer back. <laughs> oh, oh. The elves are to talk to. You can deal with him afterward. We'll look after your brother for ten minutes. Do you want to make me a uh, an easy intimidate? Ooh. Uh, Edmund with a gun. Edmund with a gun. Easy. You do realize that Edmund rolls this. This guy's going comatose. That's if I do litany of hatred on him. (laughs) Goes. All right. All right. What you was about to do? You. uh, Yeah. Yeah. You. You talk to the elf. You gonna? (laughs) I'll go back to my apartment. Sure. You see him <laughs> smile and get back up on his feet and walk down the thunk, 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 thunk down Ruby's the gonna, stairs. Ruby's going to follow him. <laughs> Ruby's just going to follow him? She's going to try and hide or she's going to just like be right there and be like, I see you. I see what you're doing. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, I know you're uh, what it, whatever his name was. She'll insert that and say, I, I know you're angry. Um, but listen. That don't... elf hurt my brother. Well, and, and we're gonna let you have him. He, we just we, we need him for a few minutes. He uh, he's got something we need, and after we get it, you can do whatever you want to him. We're not gonna stand between you and an elf. You can you can do whatever you want. In fact, we'll help you. We'll help you. There's five of us. <laughs> imagine imagine the thing won't have a chance. Just give us a minute, all right? Hmm. Come on, we brought your brother right to you before. Do you want to charm him? Sure, 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 sure. You can, uh, you can do a, a, a routine charm. All right, because you have helped him in the past. Yeah, Ruby's turning over a new leaf. See how good she is? How nice? How unviolent? For your own personal gain. Yeah. You see nice. how nice he is? He's plotting to help kill another man with a group. He goes, it's an elf. It's not a man. I'll give you five minutes. And then I'm charging in there, and I'll shoot whoever I see. All right, but remember, there's a bunch of us, and you're only going to get one shot. So being that you're a friend of mine, just take it easy, and we'll, let us take care of this for you. Okay? I'll knock first as a courtesy. Appreciate that. Uh, Ruby will go back up the steps and tell – it should be like, bye, to, to the party. <laughs> we got five minutes. I'm going to knock on the door. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> You're pretty excited. Why are you so excited? Us has the key, man. Uh, you knock on the door, and uh, you hear a voice from the side. Is that dwarf gone? Yes, yes. We've we've coaxed him back to his rooms. Your side. Who's there? Well, it's. Eurixus, the plague doctor. I don't know a Eurixus, the plague doctor. Have I partied with you before? Yeah, of course you have. I, I'm the one who always brings flowers. The door opens, and there's this uh, this elf uh, standing there. His eyes look lightless. They're like a dull, pale green. His hair is like straw-like and washed out. Uh, teak color. His skin is like papery and pale looking. Looks like he hasn't been in the sun for like ever. And he's like, a, he's got a, a thin, emancipated, uh, emaciated, uh, emaciated. six six foot uh, frame. And he's wearing like a, a fancy silk kimono. He's like, <laughs> what? I don't, I don't recognize you. I've never seen you before. Can we come in? Why? Because uh, we've got lots of things to talk to you about. 
and uh, my friends here want to come in too. What do you have to talk to me about? Did you bring any libations? I have opium. <laughs> come right in. <laughs> his like, face lights up. <laughs> uh, he opens up his door and he's got the whole top floor is his. It's this giant penthouse apartment. Uh, and it's like a rat's nest of discarded silken garments, broken china, woven glass. You look around, there's empty liquor bottles everywhere. There's like needles and opium uh, bottles laying about. Ah, come in. You should have said something sooner. Oh, this is just beautiful. Come in, guys. Come in. Now, where, where's the opium? <laughs> Licking his lips. Um, I... Well, I've got I've got this this vial right here, and I take it out, and I in the in the what I forget what it's called the little glass vial thing. I'm gonna play with it with my fingers. Ampule. And he's just kind of like reaching for it. He's like, uh, nope. I have a question. I, I we need your help first. <sighs> sigh. <laughs> he literally says, <laughs> sigh. What? <laughs> can uh, can you read something for us? <laughs> He laughs. He literally laughs. Poetry. <laughs> read, read us a story. <laughs> Please read a story that you can have your drugs, weird elf man in the silk kimono. <laughs> uh, what? What do you want me to read? <laughs> and I pat and I show him the the notebook and be like, this this um, could could you give us some? Um... So you hold it up. His eyes light up. He goes, Rollins, isn't it? Where did you get that? He gave it to me. Why would he give you that? I'm. I'm so, were you a friend, Roland? I was. I am sorry to hear to tell you this. Then he has succumbed to the plague. Oh my word! He, sits, yeah, he said uh, he like slouches cure. down on, the, on his couch. He said he might be able to find the cure for it is in his notes, and we're trying to figure this out. And if you probably unaware of this, but we've all been boarded in this building. What? And boarded in this? What are you speaking they of? They say the house is full of to plague. A, a liquor cabinet. He starts pouring some really expensive looking liquor and he offers you some. Would you like uh, any, any? Yeah, liquor? I'll take some. It's like yep. it's like eight in the morning. <laughs> He's just like, he downs it and he pours himself another one and he pours the rest of you one. Yeah, look out your window. He looks out the window. He sees a guard on the roof over there, another guard. And he sees uh, the ring blocking off the barrier, blocking off the building. He goes, what is this all about? The plague. They think this uh, this building's been infected with the plague. <sighs> what plague? What are you speaking of? Oh no, read his journal. Maybe it's the answers in there. Fine, fine. Give me the journal. He takes another drink, pours another one. Downs it. He, uh, are we... He are says, we all down, on the left down. side of this building? Uh, or? sure. Yeah, yeah. You're all on the left side. He has he has the whole top floor. Okay, I'm gonna send Tobias to the other side to see if he can find any uh, wealth in this guy's place. No, <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. You send Tobias away and over, and yeah, he starts like rummaging through um trunks and belongings and cupboards and. There's definitely money in here. There's definitely uh, this guy's. This guy's definitely wealthy. Uh, funds and pays for all of his uh, his parties. It looks like he has up here. I'll put it in a sack and bring it. Leave it somewhere for me to pick up. <laughs> like the money he finds. Yeah, of course. Sure, he starts like throwing it in a sack. So the sack, though, people will be able to see. He can't make that invisible, can he? No, but he can. Leave it out in the little staircase for us for when we walk past. Okay. Sounds good. He will collect some money and leave the staircase. Dwarf might take it. Just saying. <laughs> yeah, the dwarf who's sitting out there? I can I can see from his eyes and send him uh, messages of disapproval and approval by where he's leaving it, too, so... So he's sitting there and he's reading through his journal. Suddenly his eyes light up when he gets to a passage. And he goes, oh, no, this can't be true. What? What? Roland claims 
that this is not a plague, but there's a vampire doing this, and it is in the very basement of this building. Oh, a vampire. This is where it dwells. There Last time we heard somebody was a vampire, it didn't turn out so good for us. Who was See, that? we should have checked the basement first, like we first talked about. <laughs> Who's, who was a vampire previously? <laughs> I'm just, the other campaign. campaign. Friday's night. Oh, right, right, right. The vampire. Mm, well, perhaps we should go visit the basement then and um, end the plague. What else does it say? So, uh, it speaks about his travels. He went to some small, sleepy town. Talks about <laughs> encountering a group of looks uh, described much like the four of you. Plus, all good things, I'm sure. Yes. Yes, all good things. Here, uh, can I have this? As a memento uh, of my lost friend. No. Well, actually, um, you oh. can have it. Can we give it back to you in about ten minutes? We just need it for a couple more minutes. Fine. Okay. Uh, how, how long is it? How long has it been? Yeah, it's been about five minutes. Okay. Uh, um, your, your, Ruby your says your butler demon sees uh, the the um, the dwarf charging up the stairs. He's got a blunderbuss on his back, and he's got dueling pistols in each hand, and he's got a fiery look in his eyes. All right. Ruby's gonna slip out the door. Back, like, but back away from the doors here, guys. <laughs> wow, what's up? Ruby's uh, gonna to Ruby's company. gonna um, open the door and slip out mm -hmm. into the hall. Sure. And like keep. But like keep the door real tight so it so it doesn't open up a field of view. And she'll say, um she's like, Are you all set? I'll swing the door open for you. For the dwarf to the dwarf? Yeah. He goes, Open her up. All right, get a running start. Here we go on the count of three. One, two. And Ruby will fling the door open and jerk her head back. Get out of the way. But the rest of them are standing in the room. No, they room. got they got to the sides. That's what oh. they were all Everyone was everyone was making a path between the door sure. and the elf. The door opens and he's got the two dueling pistols and he fires them bang at the same time and throws them aside, grabs the blunderbuss off his back, looks at the elf and goes, I'll kill you for what you did to my brother! And uh, he's going to open fire on him. You mean the dueling oh. pistols hit? Uh, let's roll the dueling pistols. Uh, nope, that's a critical failure on the first one. Ah, he just tosses Blows it up in his hand. And uh, he grabs the blunderbuss off his back and fires at the elf. Oh, that's a critical success. And he hits him square boom in the body mass. Actually, what's a 66? Let's use that book. Let's use Jeff's book. Jeff's here. It's a 60. You flip it, don't you, Jeff? It's going to be the same thing either way. <laughs> so it's the body. We gotta roll for injury though. I'm just gonna do this. Oh, that's a six. Uh, we're just gonna say he injured him just for shits and giggles. Gunpowder to the body. Uh, who wants to roll me a six to determine the injury? Go ahead, Mike, Ruby. Mike, you set this up. Ruby, you set it up. Go ahead, roll me a d6. All right, here we go. D6 coming up. Boom. Gut penetrated. Oh, ow. Bleed out slowly. <laughs> uh, so he has uncontrollable retching drawback and inca incapacitated now. So all of a sudden, he throws the pistol aside, takes the blunderbuss off his back, fires it. It goes right into the center mass of this elf, and he flies back, and there's just blood oozing out of his out of his stomach, and he's uh, he's unconscious and, and bleeding to death. And the dwarf's like, ah! <laughs> he's just laughing. Yeah, it wasn't him that did it. It was a creature in your basement that did it to your brother. What? You just got he's the just wrong like, He's too fueled with, like, fury and bloodlust. Ah! Thanks! Yeah, you, got, you got it wrong. It was the thing in the basement. What thing in the basement? There's just garbage down there. Yeah, it's what hurt your brother's in the basement. Well, you just killed an innocent man, so have a good day. Ah, it's no take off. Well, he's not dead yet. I'm not dead yet. You soon will be. <laughs> You guys just leave him by, and I don't know. Do you want to do anything? You want to get involved? In all that commotion, I'm going to go grab the bag of whatever Tobias <laughs> got. <laughs> all right, sounds good. I just kind of look at Eurixis and then him to see if she's going to do anything. If her 
medical he, urges take over. He draws a sword and he charges at the elf. Just starts ah to run him through. We leave. We have the journal though, right? Yeah. yeah you can yep. Grab the journal off the floor. It was dropped after uh, he got shot in the Excellent. in the body. All right. You're off to the basement. You can hear yelling and screaming and like thudding as who knows what's going on up there, whatever the, the dwarf is doing. Hey, did I get any gold or gems or rings or? We'll talk about that later. Perfect. <laughs> Let's go. We're going Put that to the on the list, huh? kind of like my disorder. No, no, we're going to roll it later. But we're not going to sidetrack things about rolling random gold and shit. Uh, off to the basement, right? Yeah. So you go back to the main floor and the big ogre standing there. Gino. Hey, Gino, you might have a problem. Uh, you got a dwarf up there killing the elf, man. What? Yeah, he, he just shot him and started cutting him up with a sword. Oh, no. <laughs> he, he's there. It's like he can't really run. He's a very, very Lumbers. big ogre. As he puts his foot on the stairs, like they you hear the wood creak. <laughs> With each step, the whole building kind of shudders, and he slowly starts making his way up to the to the penthouse. Excellent. All right, you get to the door to the basement, and you swing it open, and it is a maze, a, a like labyrinth, just filled from floor to ceiling with like heaps of old laundry, festering old mattresses crates upon crates uh some of them must have spoiled goods in them because they hit your nose when you open the door um there's like you look down as you step in there's like rusty nails laying about and all manner of awfulness down here and it's pitch black ruby's gonna load everything i'm gonna be relying on uh tobias's dark vision but do we need a torch or something you could yeah we like you to... Well, I can't see, but I've got <laughs> that blunderbuss of that guy still. I never you gave it back. You do have a blunderbuss now with a shot in it. A with single a... shot. Yeah, let's uh, let's get a torch lit. Somebody can, two can carry a torch. Now. Who wants to carry a torch for Ruby? I will. Nice. All right, and if you want to start trying to make your way around this maze and this path. Let's do so. Go ahead. Um, who's who's in the front? Who wants to lead this party? Tobias, but he doesn't. Nobody knows that. Ruby will go Probably first. Erg if, Erg, if he's the one who can see. Yeah, yeah, I'll lead. All right, so go ahead, Erg, and make me a hard uh, survival roll to try and make your way through this labyrinth of trash. Roll me D one hundred, please. I can't believe I just made that roll. <laughs> you stumble upon what appears to be some bloody tracks, footprints, human footprints. Whatever you're tracking has been through here recently. Make me another test. This one's going to be at a routine difficulty now. This will be the one I fail, by the way. Another survival. The easy one, yeah. Yes, please. Oh. Roll me a D100. Forty-four, huh? Forty-four. Uh, you're walking around, you start kicking up dust, and it stings as it hits your nostrils. Uh, please, Erg, make me... Hmm. It's making its way through the mask? <laughs> make me... It is. Make me a standard resolve test.
All right. You start going, <gasps> and you're about to sneeze, and you stop yourself from doing so before you let it out. Go ahead and make me uh, another survival at uh, easy difficulty. All right. As you make your way through this maze of garbage, you get to what seems to be the other end of this basement. As you get to the other end, you can see that there is like a break in the wall that leads into a small room. And inside that room, you can hear the voice of a woman singing to herself. So I'm going to um, gesture to the party to group a little bit back and let them know what's going on. And uh, ask, does anybody know what vampires might be weak against? I hear they don't like sunlight. You're in a pitch black basement. Do we know... Uh... Anything, any of us have any folklore about vampires that we've heard? Uh, yeah, you can make me folklore tests for sure. Uh, you can make me a challenging folklore test. You've heard that they despise sunlight. It's potatoes. They're allergic to potatoes. <laughs> yeah, whoever passed, you know, sunlight is definitely its um, its weakness. What's Valmark now? Who's Valmark? I know the one Wrong that's coming up for Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who what's, the hell is Valmark? What's Ruby now? Uh, you've heard that that they um, sunlight, and you know that they don't. Bleed. Hmm. Ruby doesn't like that. And holy water. Ooh. Oh, do we have any holy water? I have some holy water. Do you really? I totally do. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. funny. So, what do we want to do here, guys? Do we just want to open fire with ranged weapons into this room, or... Can't see. I could hit one of y'all. Can we see anything in the room? Are you looking in? Are you getting closer? You can hear singing. You see a little hole in the wall. Do you want to poke your head in there? You know what? Can I send uh, Tobias, Tobias up to you investigate? You can send Tobias in there. So you I... send Tobias in there, and he sees a woman sitting there, and she's looking into a mirror, and she's singing softly to herself as she stares into this mirror. There is no reflection in the mirror. All right. Um, She's humming and singing away to herself. But as Tobias is standing there, she goes, I see you, little demon. What do you want from me? How you see this and hear it. <laughs> Yeah, Tobias can handle himself. Um, <laughs> He's like, uh, boss, Tobias? boss, what do I do? <laughs> I can't, I can't say anything to him. He's right, got to he, figure that one out. For he himself. runs away. He's like, ah, oh, shit. And he runs away. All right. She turns uh, around and she Tobias. starts, come back, come back. She's little demon. She's come coming back. out right now. Uh, lock, lock and load. <laughs> <laughs> lock and load. Ladies mm. and gentlemen. What if she's just misunderstood? <laughs> she's, about to, she's about to be misunderstood into 20 pieces. Is that how it's going to go? Yeah, I mean, we I don't think we can talk to the thing. You don't think so? Ever talk to a vampire? Is she coming out? Oh, yeah, she's coming out. She's... 
and she's uh she's looking for Tabata. Come back, little demon. Come back. I'm gonna say talk or shoot, guys. Decide now. <laughs> she pokes uh, her head out. See what's going on. Yeah, <laughs> what's happening? You can just you can hear though, Edmund. Ah, come back, little demon. I just want to talk. Shit, his demons can, uh, here too. Shit. Can, can does Ruby hear this thing about demons? You can hear it. Um, Erg, you can see in the dark. You see that it gets to the wall beside the little alcove that it comes out of and it starts to climb up the wall and up on the ceiling and it's now on the ceiling looking upside down in the room going come back demon mm. come back kind of like a japanese horror yeah you know what um demons now too we've got vampires and demons what as she gets is second she's within range of seeing me i'm gonna yell she sees Hello. She All sees right. us? Yeah, she gets up on the ceiling and she sees, she goes, oh, visitors, what are you doing here? Yeah, I would like to cast an instant spell. Cat can of grass when she falls off the ceiling. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Uh, um, and act, Before you do so, I need everybody to make me a resolve test. I can't even see anything. <laughs> but the terror of it, you hear this voice in the darkness calling out to demons and then call out to you. What flavor resolve? We do have torches out. Oh, yeah, because they couldn't see. Right? Without them. Oh, yeah, Eurixus was yeah. holding one. Never mind. You said it's a trivial resolve test? No, this isn't trivial. Uh, Easy. It's, it's terror. No. Routine? No, oh, what's what's terror? Let's find it in the compendium because I can't find it in my damn book. I bet that's <laughs> in the GM section. Mask of yeah. terror. Mask of terror know. comes up. I had it marked for the longest time, and I just literally turned to the page randomly with mask of terror. <laughs> Jeff's here. Jeff will shout it out. What, what's what's terror? What difficulty is that, Jeff? Feels pretty probably standard, to me. right? Almost. Routine. No, it's not standard. Yeah, I'm probably in thirty. I had the damn 30. page marked for the longest time because we used it over and over again when we did um that one game. There yeah, we go. Mean. Terror is a hard resolve test. Hard resolve. Hard resolve. Minus twenty. <laughs> Terror. Oh. Nope. nope. What happened? Nobody's oh. passing. Ooh, nope. That uh, means uh, Mike 3D did. 10 Ruby plus... did. Ruby did? All right. 3D 10 plus 3 mental pairs. See those ones. And you're also going to get uh, 6 here. corruption. Or no, 9 corruption. You all gain 9 corruption from nine. terror. 9. And... So much nine, it's almost 22 10. peril. Does anybody want to spend a fortune point <laughs> to auto pass? No, how far down do we go on the peril? Well, it depends on how bad you failed. Let's see, Erixus. I'm going to take a look at your character sheet. I would go Give down, you an idea. I went down two, three. You would go down one, two, three, also, one, two, three. So you'd be ignore two skill ranks. Yikes. Same here. Demons are one thing. Vampires are another. All right. So you take 22 points of terror and nine points of corruption. And uh, I get, we're going to go on initiative. Let's do initiative to fight a vampire without bars. Yikes. Got to get that guy to start showing up. How do we do that? And <laughs> that's a good question. All right. Let's roll her initiative. Mark this page again. And I gotta find my damn vampire page again. Oh, 
sorry. That's, uh, that's... Ooh. Or 18, sorry. It's a good roll. The polar opposite of mine. Can I use a fortune to re-roll that? No. <laughs> what a waste Failed skill that. test. Um, go ahead, plug your plug your initiatives in, please. Folks. I don't have anything in the turn order. Yeah, I don't have anything in there either. You don't? I just I just it, filled it. That's, it says turn order, but it's blank. That's cool. weird because I just filled it with all your tokens. Uh, let's try again. Open it up again. Now, do you see Edmund in there? Nope. It's going on to roll 20. I'm going to refresh my end. That's bizarre. Because this is... It is your tokens. I grabbed them from the front page. Yeah, I can see when you change it, it goes by, like, place things in turn order, blah, blah, then it goes blank, goes solid white. Is roll 20 being funny to us tonight? Oh, I know why, because you're not on the layer. Ha! You're not on the battle map. All right, let's uh, let's do this again. Now do you see Edmund in there? And then yes. Erg, and then Ruby, and then Eurixis, and then a vampire woman? There we go. It's because I didn't have you on the battle map. Han shot first. Yup. Now the question is, do regular weapons do anything against a vampire? We're going to find out. <laughs> Ruby, Maybe. throw your uh, initiative in there for me, please. I already did. Uh, Ruby. yeah. No, Ruby. I got it. Okay. Rix is, well, I was going to say Rix goes first, but no, she doesn't. Edmund goes first with Hans shot first. Uh, so I'm like, oh, shit. And I uh, just unload the blunderbuss on it. Sure, it's up on the ceiling. It's dark. Uh, uh, You've got um, some torch light. That you're kind of shining in that direction. Uh, so you can go ahead and make me a challenging shot. So that will be a routine because I'm going to aim. Yep. And let me make sure I got that in there. I think this isn't here correctly. Nope, it goes wide. It's it not one of them out. fortunes. <laughs> yeah, we need fortunes to blow up damage, though. Yeah, that's fair. Against vampires. Vampires. Uh, well, and then I guess it's my turn again. Or no, yours no, is up. Uh, no, is up next, and then, then it's back to Evan. So... What did you shoot with? Shoot their blunderbuss or what did you shoot with? Yeah, I had the blunderbuss in hand. So you're just going to so. toss that thing aside now? I think yep. it's like four reload or something. Four, too. It's, yes. Yeah, it's huge. You just throw your blunderbuss to your feet. But it does have a fury die explodes on a one or six. So. I know. All right, Eryxis, you can faintly see something up on the ceiling thanks to the torchlight, and that's where the voice is also coming from. It says, that wasn't very nice. Can I defer my turn until she's on the ground? That'll so last. what you can do is you can drop in the turn order, but wherever you decide to drop, you're there permanently. So you can drop, like, there's no, you don't know when she's going to drop to the ground. Right. There's no, like, hold action or reaction uh, action in this, where it's like, if they do X, I, I then do Y. Can I... Um, all right. I'm... I'm just going to... I'm going to actually, I'm going to go. I don't have holy water, but I have a holy symbol. I'm going to whip it out of my bag. Shine it at her. No holy water? Holy water. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. I was a little worried there when he said he had holy water. I was like, oh, this is going to be over fast. All right. It just kind of hisses at you when you do that. Excellent. That's all I can do. Now it is back to Edmund Randolph. Randolph. Okay. 
guess at this point, I'm going to spend one to whip out the hunting bow and shoot. Okay. So, all right, another to shoot. Where's my button? What? Oh, one less than last time. What the hell? Yep, I missed. Okay. I'm, I'm saving my last one for Perry. So this thing, five. I mean, it makes good. sense. This thing just scared the shit out of me, so it's like oh, my shots are off. Ooh. Yep. All right, this thing holds out its hand. It says, that is not nice. I just wanted to have you over as my dinner guests. And she can do a ranged chokehold. She's going to try and choke you, Erg. She's Darth Vader. She be, is Darth Vader. To be clear, um, do I have my three action points yet or no? Yeah, you haven't gone Yeah, yet. you have them. Okay, well, I'm going to use an instant spell the second she's targeting me. Uh, I would like to use a fortune point to increase the likelihood that this works. Your gear roll works? Yep. Okay, so go ahead and roll your incantation for me then. I'm going to hold up a bag of desiccated corpse. Here's the new one. <laughs> he's been dying, dying to play he's gonna, this spell. He's going to burn you all down in here, you know that. 13 chaos, holy shit. Holy shit, what just happened? Three corruption. Bye, bitch. No, so, uh, the chaos. So, first it looks like I rolled two sixes on that. Yeah. Uh, which is... I was channeling spell power times three. So there's going to be a moderate backlash on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. We've never seen this before. But she's also going to have to resist uh, my magic. Well, you just get easier roll, don't you? Well, yeah, but she still has to resist. And if she successfully resists, uh, one second here. Successful scrutinize? Yeah, she has to resist with a successful scrutinize. And if she succeeds, she takes 3d10 plus 3 damage. Just if she it's... doesn't succeed, she's turned to salt. So just because it's instantaneous, though, it's not a reaction, though. It is considered a reaction This for this. Are you sure? I've gone through the book half dozen times, and this looks like how it's supposed to be used. Because duration is like casting time. He's been dying to use and how, this one. And how long it, like, how like... Long it lasts. <laughs> but you're casting a spell. You have to wait till your turn. Can't comment. I haven't read any of the spell stuff. So yet. it says instantaneous on it, and I thought that's how this was supposed to be used. I think it's if it's that's, uh, the no, cast the time. That just means it boom, it happens. Yeah, this isn't a. Re you can't use it as a reaction. Oh, okay. Well, then let her choke me, and we'll save this for. Okay. When it's my turn, she's attacking. Right. So chokehold. She's attacking me anyway, so it'll still so be used. So athletics her. test, and you have to make an athletics test. So let's see if she passes. She passes the athletics test. Roll your athletics. All right, so you successfully resist her chokehold. Excellent. So now she is going to she seemingly disappears. <gasps> uh oh. And you don't see her anymore. But that go for Tobias as well. Tobias cannot see her either. Lovely. Um, I say we uh we leave the basement. All right, that uh, takes us to Erg. You're up. She has disappeared. 
when it Ruby's turn? Uh, yes, Ruby. I'm sorry, I clicked the button too soon. Um, is there such a thing as a prepared action that when she sees this thing again, nope. she can shoot at? There is not. There's not. Okay. Well, then I guess I'm done until uh, we see. Uh... Okay, I'm just gonna sit there with your weapon out. Yep. Okay. She's gonna have her. Um... Yeah. Er, gear up. I mean, there's not much I can do with her invisible, right? So <laughs> I'm going to wait till she's Did... available. Um, Ruby's going to shout out, is, is she using magic to disappear? Can you cancel her, her can you overcome her magic? Can you force nope. her out? All right. Eryxis, back to you. I'm like frantically showing this holy symbol in and around um, the group and uh, say, are we just gonna sit? Are we just gonna stand here, wait for her to come back? Should we go upstairs in the late? Let's go. Let's go uh, see what's in her hole over there. Okay. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Maybe we can draw her out by going after her stuff. You first. I'll hold the torch. <laughs> Eryx is, Eryx is your turn so you're just going to wait there or you're going to wait for the others to go in first or are you going to start moving towards her hidey hole uh, as long as somebody's right close behind me I'll start shimmying over kind of shuffling yeah, we'll all shuffle together Benny Hill style <laughs> <laughs> yes alright so Eryx are you going to move we'll go ahead and move your token if you're going to move there I am we're still in combat could y'all hear that thunder no Oh, okay. it was loud. We're about to have a storm hit here. Where are we? Oh, where do we need to go? Was, is, the um, the, the is it, hidey hole will be at the, the south end. How big a hole is it to get through? It's like a four foot diameter. Oh, okay, so everyone can get through, even the ogre? Yeah. So, okay. so we're going this way? Yeah, south. South. That's right. We're going. Yes, yes. Go into my hidey hole. <laughs> All right. Uh, it didn't sound right. No. no Panda. <laughs> All right, you move there. Edmund, are you going to follow Eryxis? Yeah, we, we need to stay together. I love that picture. You are a very rotund man. <laughs> he found yes, that. I it's am. perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. Uh I'm quiet. All right, it's it's turn. Uh, we got we're also more, like at the end of our time here, aren't we? We can we can go. A little, it's it's a holiday tomorrow. Not here. We had our holiday last week, and I know two of our players are employed well, and working. Not <laughs> me. Yeah, not it. <laughs> who? Uh, who needs to get up early tomorrow? Not Those it. Two. The other two. Anyone? Okay. But I don't have to get dressed. So that cuts down. <laughs> that cuts down. <laughs> I don't have to be dressed. <laughs> I'm good to keep going myself. Bill, well, are you? Yeah, we can go for 10, 15 more minutes. 10 more minutes? All right. It's, it's, it's this thing's turn. Ruby. Mm hmm. All of a sudden, you die. Yeah. <laughs> right? I guess I could, couldn't I? Um, you are standing there, and all of a sudden, behind you, you can hear like a mouse or a rat. And you turn around, and she is standing right next to you. Ah. And she is going to cast a spell on you. Our attempt to, at least. She has to touch you. She reaches out her cold, bony hand and touches you. 
All right, can I attempt to parry? Uh, nope. You can counter really? spell? Yeah. Bill, can people Why couldn't carry I your try spells? to block her hand with my rapier? I, I can't block her hand with my rapier? Uh, I don't I have believe to stand there with my sword like this. And... No. That's silly. She casts the spell successfully. Well, she touches you as her mouse then. Or she she doesn't tell you that she's there and all of a sudden there's you feel a, a hand on your shoulder. Um okay. she is casting Brush with Death. That so like a you get to or a after successfully cast the spell, the person you touch must resist with a successful coordination. So go ahead and please make me a coordination test. Okay. What difficulty am I doing? Standard. You got this, Ruby. This is the nice thing about having all the spells in the game here. Wow, I used to have to like look all these up and flip back and forth. They are can Erg counter spell? Is it a reaction? Would have to have that. Counter spell is a reaction. That is a reaction, yeah. That was a it's an actual spell you have to pick, or is it just an Yeah, it's an actual spell. Have? Go ahead and make me a coordination test, please, Ruby. You make it. So your brush with death. Was, uh, you were successful in avoiding your brush with death. Okay, I would like to stab her now. Uh, she <laughs> disappears again. Ruby, you're up. Seriously? He can't repose. Seriously? The... Seriously? She she can dis she can attack and disappear before I can even react. Move she has attack. action points. <laughs> You're, well, you're then we're all going to die. We want, uh, Ruby says we should leave because this this we're not going to be able to fight the, this. Run thing. away! I'm going to yell, um, show yourself where we smash your mirror. Okay. Ruby, what do you want to do on your turn? Uh, I just think this is silly. Um, she, she's going to come up uh, and get back to back with uh, Edmund. Okay. And Durexus. You guys are fighting a, a pretty powerful magical creature. You don't haven't fought yep. a lot of these. So this is a very different encounter than what you're used to. Well, right. But, um, I mean, if she can attack and disappear before we can react and we have no way to make her visible, then... No, no. Uh, I just heard Erg yell, show yourself when we break your mirror. So right. I'm going for the mirror as soon as I can. All right. Ruby, you go over there to Edmund. Erg, it's up to you. Yeah, I'm going to... Um... Let's say sprint for the mirror. All right, sprint for the mirror. Hey, we're getting raided. Featherfall, thank you for the raid. Very much appreciated. You're, you've come in time to watch the PCs die to a vampire. Or at least they think so. A Nosferatu, as it is in the book. The, uh, the, the mirror hole? is straight south? Straight south, yep. Yeah. Well, her hidey hole is over there. That's your move. You can, can I can I what, get to how, it? Or? Well, how many spots did you move? Like, how much movement do you have? I have... Well, it's doubled because I'm running, right? Okay. But my movement, I'm looking for it here. It's been so long since I looked that up. Movement is five. So you can move ten... A double? No, right. say uh, running times three. Running times three, so 15. But that will take, what, is that two or th that's three action points, isn't it? To run? Three action points. That's all of his action points. Yeah, to go that. Or you charge for double. <clears throat> yep. Yeah, all I'll right. charge for double. How far can I go? You can save make it one. Just just inside you get just inside the uh her little lair with that mini uh inside there it's a small little carved out hovel in there there's like a pot sitting on a fire um looks like there's nothing in the pot there's a spoon sticking out of it there's a mirror up against one wall that was the mirror that tobias saw her looking in and uh there's like bloody rags most likely from her victims lying about 
Uh, and that's really about it. There's not much in here. I mean, I'm assuming she's coming for me next. Eryxis, what do you want to do? Actually, I'm... at the top of the turn order, this is a good time to end then. If we, uh, if Bill's got to leave in a few minutes anyway. So why don't we stop at the top of the turn order and we'll come back next week with part two of Vampire Nosferatu fight. Good stuff. Good stuff. Where's Barsh? Oh, we could use Barsh here. We could cleave this thing in two. Convince him to come to show up next week. All you need is one good. I love hit. that we're fighting a strong magic <laughs> enemy. A strong. It's like the first time you guys have one shot of demons before, and now there's a threat. All right, tonight I will give you 150 experience for the session, and let's roll corruption for those people who failed their terror test. Roll a zero. One. You all gained corruption. Who, uh, except for Ruby. Otherwise, she gains an order. Hello, hello. You guys joined us just as we were coming to a close. We'll have to send the party and the raid elsewhere. Um, keep this train a-rolling. See who we can find to raid. Uh, so what do we got going on this week? This week on the channel, tomorrow night there's nothing happening. Tuesday we're back with Dark Astral. We're playing through a, um, a classic Dark Heresy adventure, The Edge of Darkness. That's at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. On Wednesday, we have Journey Pro Wrestling doing their live Zweihander show. And that is at 5.30 Central Standard Time. Thursday, we have Amber doing Design Hander, where she's doing a live redesign of the Zweihander character sheet at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Followed by the Lollygaggers, a.k.a. the Gaggers. I saw Mel in here, so I had to get that that in uh and they are at 9 p.m central standard time they've just started a uh, a new adventure the unsettled stem i think that's what it is i gotta remember all these names friday night chuck and the defenders are back at 9 p.m central standard time with uh, the bloody marches and we'll be back here next sunday at 9 p.m central standard time with more swyhander now let's see who we can raid who looks good for the raiding out there It slowly loads. What's what are people playing? What are we? Ooh, there's not a lot going on on Sunday night. We're uh, we're near the end of the uh, the night for a lot of people. Let's do. Oh, there's some playing D and D and tabletop RPG. Good for them. Did that okay. hurt you to say that? <laughs> if I ran Zweihander in Dungeons and Dragons. Um, I would hear about it. People would say something to me because it's happened. Someone's running Star Trek. Let's go drop in on them. Let's go raid them. And their Star Trek game. I've been intrigued by that game. I've heard nothing but good things. All right. So have a good night, everybody. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we'll be raiding them in three, two, one. Hey. Later.